We're just mere men. We're just servants. We're just doing what God purposed and assigned us to do. We're nothing special. You're serving God in how, the way that God chose for you to serve. We're serving God in the way that God chose us to serve. But we're working together for God's one purpose. But one of the amazing things is that Paul emphasizes, guess what? We actually are really nothing. But what really matters is the one who made us, and that's God. God is the one. We may labor, we may serve, we may evangelize, but ultimately God is the one who makes it grow. We're just servants. But the amazing thing and the encouraging thing that I read from this passage is that not only does it say that we work together as Paul and Apollos work together, but God, Paul made known, guess what? We are fellow workers with God. Can you imagine how the God of the universe, the God who made the sun, moon, and stars, the God who is expanding the universe and so forth and has existed for all eternity has chosen for each and every one of you to work alongside him. That's a pretty amazing honor. Because as God's creation, I, he could mandate saying, you will serve me regardless. And, 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 and we would deal with it. And hopefully with a good attitude because he's God. But the amazing thing is God not only wants us to work for him, he wants us to work with him. I don't really think we understand how honored we are and how thankful we should be to realize that we actually get to work with Almighty God. That we get to be co-workers with him. That he actually allows me to make a difference in that time span of human history. How he actually uses me I'm not the most talented, I'm not the best looking, I'm not the most educated, but God with his almighty power chose to use me somehow in his kingdom. He chose for a way for each and every one of you to make a difference in his kingdom. But one of the things that we understand is God is the one who makes it grow, but when we work together, we give God an even greater opportunity to grow something. As the book of Ecclesiastes makes known, two is better than one. As the book of Proverbs makes known, chapter 27, verse 17, and it makes known as iron sharpens iron, so as one man does another. I mean, we, we see from biblical principle and from the word of God an example that we make a difference. And so one of the things that we have to understand is that we must work together and that God allows us to work for him and to realize that we're just servants. We're just ones who are doing what God has called us to do. We're not doing it for ego. We're not doing it to be a creative following. We're doing it in order to have that purpose of glorifying God. But another aspect that I see here that we need to do in verse 10 and 11 is that we need a common foundation. It says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Christ Jesus. One of the amazing things that we have to realize is every relationship that exists is built upon some kind of foundation. It could be based on money. It can be based on leisure. It can even be based on dysfunction. But a healthy family is one that has a healthy foundation. And the foundation that God established for the church to have is Jesus Christ. It's that impenetrable foundation. It's that one that's unshakable that won't ever go away. We're building upon Jesus Christ. We don't build on Micah. We don't build on Jay. We don't build on anyone but Jesus Christ. He is that foundation. He's the rock that brings us together. And it makes us Christ focused. When we make decisions, we think of Christ. When we decide to serve, we think of Christ. When we work together for the Lord's purpose, we think of Christ. And we ultimately do it according to his will and his purpose. And as he teaches, it is through Christ that God receives glory from us. You see, the way that God chose to receive glory is not by our own means, but through Jesus Christ. The only way we can actually truly glorify God is through Jesus Christ. Apart from Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. Jesus made that known. You can do nothing apart from him. And so one of the amazing things that we have to understand is that if we truly want to bring God the glory, it has to be and only through 
Jesus Christ, not through any individual. This is why we emphasize Christ, not some, some denominational leader, not some founder, but the one who actually founded the church, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so one of the things that I think about is that we have to think about Jesus all the time and let him be the foundation. Let him be the focus. Remember, he is that which everything is built upon, the church, our faith, everything. And so when all things come from Christ and is built upon Christ, then that's when we're going to make a difference. But just like if you start and serve and you're a servant and you're trying to do great things, one of the things that you want to do is you want to have quality results. You don't want to just serve for the sake of serving. You want to be like that servant that had five talents and you said, Master, here's five more. Or the two talent man say, here's two talents, here's two more. We want to have quality results. That's one of the things that we see here. And we see this in verse 12 through 15. It says, if any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light, and it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames." You see, one of the main things that we understand is we're building upon the foundation of Jesus Christ, but we're building with those costly stones, with that gold, with that silver, all those things. But all the, what that means is we're building in the way that God would have us to build. We're not building apart from Christ. We're not building apart from his word, but we're using what he wants us to use to build for his glory. A lot of times people come up to me and they say, Mikey, you have a background in marketing. You've won awards in marketing and different things. Why don't you do whatever you want to do to fill seats in the chair? I mean, and I say, you know what? Because this passage tells me my work is going to be shown for what it's revealed. God's not going to look at a huge building full of people and then say, I'm pleased with you because you did it by your own effort and your own wisdom. Because then I would be building with hay and straw. That, those things would be consumed in the fire. But we build in accordance with the word of God and according to what God desires. This is one of the things that we have to understand. We, when, if we're going to build up the church and help build up and bring people into Christ, we have to do it his way. Part of using quality ingredients is to make sure that his house is built as he desires. Built to stand, built to be strong. And so one of the things that I think about is everything that we do and what we're going to, it has to come from the word of God. It has to be imitating the example of Christ. If we don't, everything we do is fruitless because our work will be one day revealed. What we use to build the church. This is one reason why I use the word of God and I preach from the word of God. It's going to filter out those who will truly want to follow Jesus or not. It's going, to reveal, it's going to make sure that I'm saying what God is actually saying, so it's actually not me saying it. It's part of that which says, I'm going to imitate the attitude and the character and the compassion of Jesus Christ, so I actually have opportunity to make a difference. All these different aspects really come back to Jesus. Am I doing what Jesus is, tells me to do? Am I saying what Jesus said? Because all those things are going to be shown for our, our works when we, it, they're being revealed one day. What we want to do is we want to be like those servants that say, here, I doubled what you've given me, but I did it your way. Can you imagine in that parable of the talents that if the master found out that the servant doubled his money, but he did it unethically, and he did it at the expense of other people? I don't think that the master would have been happy with that because he was building it in the wrong way. That's one of the reasons why we preach the word of God. We allow God to convict the hearts of men. This is why everything we do is we don't base it on man's wisdom, man's ability, man's opinions, but we base it on God's desires, God's commands, because everything he does is so significant. Someone said, well, don't you feel limited so much by scripture that you can't do what other people do? And I said, only if I view the power of God as weakness. Because if I depend on God in prayer, if I depend on God in following the example,